An activist from Black Lives Matter says riots across America following the death of George Floyd George Floyd, are an uprising born out of 400 years of oppression and white Americans wouldn't stay quiet if it was happening to them. The unarmed black man died when a white police officer pressed his knee against his neck for several minutes. George Floyd begged to be released, but he wasn't. Now, as you heard in a speech from the White House Rose Garden today, Donald Trump warned if individual states don't mobilise all civilian and military military resources to end the lawlessness, he will do it for them, quickly solving the problems, he says. But Hawk Newsom from the Greater New York chapter of Black Lives Matter says protesters have reached their tipping point. Black people here are angry and they're upset. Not just the killing of George Floyd, but for 400 years of oppression. Let's be clear, this wasn't an act last week, this is a compilation of so much poverty, so much pain, so much injustice, and people have reached their tipping point. And what, what do people do when they don't have a voice? They riot. If this were white Americans that this were happening to, they would never sit down. They would never march peaceful, peacefully. You want to talk about uh, things going up in smoke, hopes and dreams going up in smoke. The Bronx has a 40% high school dropout rate. And if those kids are lucky enough to make it to college, 90% of them drop out. Our hopes and dreams diminish every day. But nobody cares when it's just black people. Nobody cares until it affects them. And that's what this, these riots are doing, because for the first time I've ever seen, people are not just destroying their community. They're going into white communities and burning down buildings. They're going in, they're going in Minnesota. They built, burned down a precinct. Like, the, this is an uprising. This is an uprising. And... You know, some people say it's violent, but I don't see people killing police officers. I don't. They say it's race-based violence, but half of the people out there are white. So your president has spoken today, and he said all Americans are sickened and revolted by what's happened to George Floyd, and he says his administration is committed to justice for George and George's family. Do you believe that? I believe that that's the right thing to say politically. Um, he might have a shred of decency, right? And and he may have seen this happen and wanted change. However, last year on July 17th, Black Lives Matter in, of Greater New York took a bus to the Department of Justice and said, tomorrow, the statute of limitations will expire for the Department of Justice, Donald Trump's Department of Justice, to prosecute the cop that killed Eric Garner. They refused to prosecute that cop. And that was the first I can't breathe case. There was a man named Andrew Kearse who said, I can't breathe 11 times as he lay dying in the back of a police car. There was a man named David Dungay, who's an Aboriginal man and who was an ad Aboriginal man in Australia, who said, I can't breathe 11 times as prison guards kneeled on him the same way that these officers kneeled on George Floyd. The problem is, I don't believe in words. I believe in action. And their action compelled me to believe that they do not care about black people in America, and in many cases, in America, and in many cases abroad. The government, your government, has dispatched, well, is dispatching thousands and thousands, to use your president's words, of heavily armed police on to the streets and maintains that he's going to quell the protests and the violence. Is that going to help at all? To be perfectly honest, people feel like they're risking death every day. There's no such thing as saying that people are heavily armed 
all it takes is one gun and one bullet to end a black life. And we see this way too often when a police officer shoots an unarmed black person. So for him to make this threat, this is what we face every day as black people in America. Do you see it as a threat, Hawk? Do you see those words as a threat? Um, yes, but we see we are threatened every day, right? Policing in this country was a pandemic before the COVID pandemic. But now you're telling us that we can be found guilty, no crime whatsoever, and we can come in contact with a police officer and he can be judge, jury, and executioner, and you won't do anything about it? After all these, the, the past five years we've been marching, it's been Black Lives Matter, it's a slap in the face that a police officer still feels that he can get away with this type of behavior. So, okay, and the government has done nothing to change. So what needs to happen now, immediately, and obviously more needs to happen long term, but right now, what's needed? We need to pass a bill, Black Lives Matter Greater New York proposed, called the I Can't Breathe Act. If a police officer hears someone say, I can't breathe, or witnesses someone in medical distress, and they do not render assistance to said person, and that person suffers an injury, then that police officer will face a Class A felony. If that person dies, then the officer will be charged with murder. Okay, that's, that's, what we, that's an immediate need. So only one officer has been charged in relation to George's death. What should happen with the other three, at least? The charge that the officer faced is a cupcake charge. It's murder in the third degree. A lot of people don't notice about me, but I have a legal education. I went to law school before becoming a full-time activist. And the murder three charge is not serious whatsoever. If prosecuted... I'd wager that this officer might face 10 to 12 years in jail. Um, there was an officer in, in Texas who went into the, this black man's house, and she, she thought he was a burglar in his own house, and she shot him and murdered him and was found guilty, and they only did for 10 years. So um, right now they need to uh, they need to prosecute the other officers involved in the death of George Floyd. What do you make of all the people who were, well, present when George Floyd was being knelt on by the officer and repeatedly saying he couldn't breathe? There were a lot of people around who were watching, witnessing that, some of them filming, and I know it's hard to intervene. Do you have anything to say to bystanders? I know that the police are the police and you're taught that the police are heroes. You're taught that the people, the police are here to respect and to protect you. But what the police in America have shown us is that they are your enemy and that they will kill you. So if you see someone being murdered by the police, you should intervene because the politicians won't protect you and the other, the politicians won't protect this person and the other police won't protect that person. So you have to take it upon yourself and risk potentially your life to save your brother or your sister's life. We cannot stand back and watch our people be murdered anymore. And that was Hawk Newsom from the Greater New York chapter of Black Lives Matter.